All right, guys, we're here. We're gonna show you the install of the plus two and the plus four base pads for your P365X Macro 17 RMX. We get a lot of questions. Will it fit the 15s, will blah, blah, blah? It will not. So if you see here, the 17s curl outward and the 10s, 12s, and 15s curl inward. So it's safe to say that no base plate that fits on the 15, 12, or 10 will fit on the 17. It's a completely different. This is this is kind of more standard in the industry, flaring it outward. Um, the smaller mags flared inward so that they could be flush with the frame. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead, just jump in it, get this going so that we can move along, show you what's going on and show you, try to answer questions along the way. So here we just have a factory 17 round mag. It's, it's well, um, well used. We're gonna take the factory one off, push this little detent. I'm just using a random Allen that I had lying around. I'm not at my shop today to record this. I am homebound for a bit. So take that off, you can throw that aside and we're gonna start like that. So here we are, your plus four and your plus two will come with two pieces. This is the retainer right here. You're gonna go ahead and just slip it on there. It's got a little bit of movement in that slot. Boom, boom, boom. And then you're just gonna push it to where that tab is on the outside of the magazine. So I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna line things up. I'm doing this through the camera lens as always, so it's a little bit difficult. Don't have like a cameraman. And then we're just gonna put the mag little flared tabs in those tabs there. And I don't even know if I can do this through the camera, but I'm too bad. We're gonna wanna keep pushing because that little, the detent right there is gonna wanna hang up. So push a little bit more, push it all the way, and then go ahead and push that until it goes down, boom. Hopefully you saw that, we'll do it again with the plus four. And then sometimes that just doesn't wanna line up exact. So you'll just kind of shimmy it over with something. It's not gonna sit flat. This is a, we have a thick uh, base pad. We want these to last. Um, and there you are, it's installed. That is the plus two. Let's just check it out in the flared magwell here. So this is our magwell. Um, the reason these took a little longer to design is we caught wind that SIG made a magwell also. And so theirs was a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller, and so we had to make some adjustments to fit theirs also. So this will fit our magwell as well as um, SIG's magwell. And most likely any magwell on the market, but not specifically. If you look, the factory base pad is, is tapered. Ours is tapered a little bit less, so uh, if, if you if you have the 17 round mag and you tried in your Icarus with a magwell or XYZ magwell and you notice it's got enough room, go ahead and give it a try out. We'll try to put on the just on the website which ones these fit in, so that you can have a uh, better understanding before buying. So that's what it'll look like without the magwell. Um, again, it's specifically designed to fit a magwell. There are two different ways to to run this. Being that if you want it to fit a magwell, you've got to taper that edge, but you're not going to get a clean mating surface. And that is why we make the flush fit plus two like that. It's a lot cleaner, better surface if you don't plan to run a magwell. Will not fit in a magwell, will fit in a magwell, and it will fit with without a magwell. So, um, boom, there we are with that. Um, we'll go ahead and just, while we're at it, show you the fit on the Mischief Machine Commander X Macro module. Um, it's, it's a really good fit. We are working on a magwell for this with them, trying to figure out a way that um, will work best for the users so they don't have to buy a bunch of stuff every time. So stay tuned for that, but there we are. On that. I don't have an Icarus module to show you, not, an, uh, not a macro module, so uh, 
you're going to have to play that by ear until I can either get one or uh, until maybe uh, someone comments and says they have one and not, they bought one of these and it does fit. So I'm not too sure here. So let's, let's try the plus four install. So same as the plus two, but we're just going to go ahead and do it again. Give you guys a couple opportunities to want to see how this works. Retainer on the backside, line up the little grooves, push it on. Sometimes you got to push the, the plate down so that you can get that surface passed. Push it all the way back. Let the spring push that back down. You can help it with your thumb and then make sure that little detent is lined up. Again, it won't be flush because our base pad is thicker than the plastic ones on the bottom due to the internal cavities. This is an old prototype, but the internal cavities to be able to mill some of, this, some of these angles. So boom, there we are guys. There is your plus four. Let's go ahead and look at that in the magwell. And of course you've got ledges on both of these, I call it strip stripe. It's just something that your fingers will grab on when you are stripping the magazine. Again, the same as always, these are gonna fit in any um, setup, bar. Some of the Icarus ones, we'll try to comment on the product page. Once we find out if they fit the Icarus uh, grip modules that have their built-in magwells. All right, so that is that. I wanna show you that. I'm gonna go ahead and load one of these up, but I also want to kind of review the removal just a second time. Push the pressure off of the retention plate there. And sometimes it's a little difficult, so maybe you have to use a, a leg to hold your mag against, like I'm gonna do right here, just because my hands are sweaty and slippery right now. And then can just kind of rock that back and forth. There we are, almost all the way out. And there we are. So one of the one of the caveats we're going to mention here, we have this lip built into the front, but what we've noticed is, sorry, these are so dirty. These ones won't do it because they're well used and they're broken in. These, this, this front right here is sharp from factory. I don't have a factory new one and the back right here can, can snag. So what we've done um, is just use them. If it's ever snagged, we managed it. But if you wanna go ahead before you install it, take your spring out, hit that with a little sandpaper or, or light file, boom, 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 boom. You will eliminate that, that possibility to snag when this is pushed too far down it now see how it's rounded now it won't be able to catch on that part once it's kind of compressed all the way because it's rounded out same in the back so that's something that you can do to mitigate that um but at the same time just if you if you <laughs> if you've used your mags at all that's that's pretty much going to be worn down by now these, I've never done it on these, and I can't get them to jam anymore. Um, but if you notice it, un take your mag apart, see if the one time it jammed, if that already fixed the issue, most likely it will. If not, tap that with a little sandpaper or a little file. Nothing major. Um, you can use this as reference. It's just rounded out instead of a sharp little snag point. So. So that's that, you shouldn't have the issue on the plus two, but you can go ahead. Yeah, it never hurts if you got fresh mag to do that. And that's that. So let's put this back together and try to answer some questions that we think you guys might have on these. So uh, these will not work with mag guts. They will not work with pro mags or any other something something these are not generic one size fits all like a lot of people make if you see there's a few on the market that they change the angle from the factory mag I'll show you here from the factory mag it changes the angle by making the base pad angled like that that just means you're getting long up front but you're not getting any more rounds for the added length of the front 
Whereas we went ahead and just lengthened the entire magazine because this is such a tight design. The spring stacks on itself. If you notice, it's smaller down here. Bigger, 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 smaller, 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 smaller. So it stacks on itself, optimizing space and using that space. And so if you make your base pad and you angle it like that, and what it'll do is it'll just rotate that base pad, allowing you less rounds, but still the, the, the increased length. So we went ahead and just made it the same. So real quick guys, let's go ahead and load this up. I just wanna show you, um, these are live rounds, full rounds. These are what I carry right now. We're gonna do this before our battery of our light runs out. A lot of you guys are gonna ask, oh, sweet slide, that's a Norso slide, that's a Parker Mountain Comp, that is our trigger, our base pad, and that's our Pro Ledge with the key on the TLR7 sub, the 1913 sub, because the macro has a 1913 rail, whereas the 365 and the 365 XL have a proprietary rail, so they make a TLR7 SIG version to mount to that SIG proprietary rail. The macro has a standard 1913 rail, so you get the 1913 light. I lost count, but here we are at nine. Okay, there's 17. That's your that's your normal normal capacity. 18, 19, 20. One, so 21, if you, here's where you're gonna come into an issue. I've got 21 in there. If you go ahead and use a tool and try to get a 20 second in there, that is 22 rounds in there. It is now bound up. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna bind in here. So don't, don't force it and it's gonna be really tight. You're not gonna be able to slap, rack your slide. So keep the 21, don't just keep loading until you can, can't load no more, you know, that's not, that's not beneficial. You're gonna have a hard time racking your slide. You are, you're gonna run the risk of binding your spring at the bottom. Um, the reason we did this is we wanted to keep close to the factory setting of the standard magazine so that it wasn't harder to rack so we gave it a little bit more space because we have this shim and that us that does allow a 20 second round to fit i'll show you again it fits but there's no other wiggle room and so you're gonna have a really hard time running it like that so please guys sure it's a plus five but it's not really that's not ideal you're gonna run the risk of malfunctions so Count it and keep the 21 and you should be good in, in that case. So this is uh, another question you'll have. I can't even remember what the rules are. It's like a competition. Your length of mag has to be under um, a certain length. This is under that length. I wish I had the gauge. Again, I'm at my home office recording this. So the gauge is not here. I'm home taking care of my wife for a bit but it is under, it is actually slightly shorter than a 21 round mag for the 320. And if you've, if you competed at all, you know, the 320 mags, the 21 round 320 mags, certain classes, you have to shave off just a bit of the polymer to get it to fit the gauge that they make for those competitions, but this will fit. So boom, there we are guys. Um, any other questions, drop them in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, show you those. So the reason we did a plus two and a plus four was let's go ahead and put the factory mat base pad back on here on our bent spring. Seems to be working a little better. The reason we did a plus two because we didn't plan. We're not planning to make a a, a metal one that fits a magwell because the factory one does. But at the same time, if it's jammed, you can't really 
rip it out. So our ultimate solution is you run a plus two, you maybe carry that way, or that's just, instead of extending a flat one and not adding rounds, you might as well have a slightly longer plus two and your plus four as, as, as a backup. So this is what I carry right now. I didn't have these in, I was carrying this with this as a backup, but now I'm gonna try this out and see how that prints. Again, this is a little bit big of a grip for my body style, just because I'm, I guess, little? I don't know what the right word is. Um, but while we're here, while we got you guys, we wanted to just do a quick little spotlight on this Pro Edge holster for the X Macro. We, we, we talked with the, um, I always change out my clips so their name's not on there, McKinnatech. And we're just like, hey, instead of just a groove that runs the length, can we turn it into a, a sort of a wedgie so that it, at the same time, it's canting the gun into your body. And so that's kind of what we did there. Kind of a cool little, little feature there. And yeah, we're also in talks with Tier 1 as of a couple days ago, try to get them to support these. So we're going to get them numbers on how many holsters we sell. But... Go ahead and bug them. Say, hey, could you guys make a holster for the Pro Ledge for the macro? And see if we can get them on board. Because they are local to us, so we'll see if what we can do to make that happen. Um, other questions you might have. Boom. I think I just really all I, I've showed you in the other modules, showed you without a magwell, with a magwell. Um, people are asking if we're gonna make a plus four like this. Um we haven't started that design. We feel like if we keep, we could come straight and it would work. So it's possible we could do that. Uh, again, this is the, the Pro Ledge without a light. Pro Ledge that fits on the TLR7 sub 1913. Of course, with the Holosun EPS, people are gonna ask all these questions and the sites are Dawson Precision P320 sites so that I can get um, Get them tall enough. Oh, everyone's gonna ask, how did you black out the letters? I use a black paint pen. Go to Amazon, it's flat black, testers, testers, paint pen. This just makes it easy. Um, trying to think of any other questions, but for now, I can't think of any. Guys, go ahead and like the video, share it if you can. We are word of mouth, we don't pay for marketing. We're not on YouTube for monetization we just do it for content that we make of stuff um so yeah it gets the word out helps us a lot we appreciate it and if if you own any of our products uh you know let us know hit uh hit our website up the product page you bought it from and drop a review that that stuff's really important to us uh really important to other customers see that we're legitimate we're not just some uh chinese shop <laughs> with a website so Thanks, guys, for tuning in. And this has been the plus two and the plus four for the X macro. There's another question. Factory springs. It just works with the factory springs. Ran this. That's why this one's so beat up. We ran this all day at SHOT Show Range Day. No failures. Didn't have any issues. So here we are, guys. Thanks. And yeah, hopefully I answered enough. If not, again, comments in the description or comment below and we try to get there and answer those if it's not something already answered on the product page so that is the first place to go go to the product page look for answers if you don't find them there reach out thank you